Okay, so it's time to install the silicon heater, but before I do that, I want to make sure I have uh, any holes that I would need drilled and tapped. Um, some holes are needed for the feet, and obviously there'll be a hole um, if I was going to fit a different type of uh, thermocouple. So um, I'm thinking about putting on a separate thermocouple, including the one that came with the heater. Um, so I'm just going to make sure I have the right holes drilled and tapped before I actually mount the heater and um, just to prevent any damage to it really. So we'll get all the messy stuff done first and then we'll put the heater on, on itself. So um, what I've found is some standoffs. Unfortunately, uh, as always, I need four, but can only find three. So um, I found three 25 long and this one that's about 50 long. So I'll have to cut this down unless I can find another one. But these are the standoffs I'm gonna use. Um, this heater is only gonna stand proud, like I say, 25 mil. So it's a lot shallower than my original one and doesn't need to stand off the, f off the floor as high anymore. So. I'm going to fit those before I fit the heater and um, I'm going to use the existing corner holes that are already there. Unfortunately these have been drilled and tapped for M3 and uh, the standoff studs that I have are M4 so um, I'm going to drill these corner holes out with a 3.3mm metric drill and I'm going to tap the holes with an M4 uh, taper tap, it's actually a number one tap and then I'm just going to lightly dress the holes with a countersink just to put a slight taper on them and clean up the burr so uh, I shall do that now and um, speed up the video as a time lapse a bit later on so I'm going to get on and drill and tap these holes and uh, get this installed now. So let's move the uh, the heat mat out of the way so it doesn't get damaged. Um, move this stuff out of the way so it doesn't pick up any swarf. And move these out of the way. Okay. So I'm just going to drill these 3.3. done that with a drill um, not by hand ideally you should do it by hand but um, if you're careful using cutting fluid and a correctly sized um, hole to start with as long as you can hold everything parallel um, you can do it with a drill on aluminium especially so uh, yeah that's tender what I do with small holes is uh, just use a drill And, um, before I actually go any further, um, I'm going to think about where I actually want my extra K-type thermocouple. Um, I kind of already know. type thermocouple there. I'm going to use this one separately there, right on the 
thinnest point of um, that grid wire. I don't know whether you can see that in this light, if that's possible at all. Probably not. Oh, there. So you can see the uh, wire is in the silicon heater. So I'm going to mount 1K type thermocouple actually on the heatsink, but I shall put the one that came with this heater and put it right there on that thinnest part of that heating element section. This will probably be where the most concentrated heat is, which is why obviously you generally put the heating sensing device in the center of the heat mat. But um, I want to actually monitor the heat mat and the, the heat sink itself because the two will be slightly different temperatures and uh, I want to protect this heat mat more than I'm worried about my heat sink. So this is what I'm going to do for now. So yeah, right there I will put one and one actually on the heat sink itself. And because that's already been tapped to an M4, sorry an M5, I can already use that hole, so that's good. Don't need to worry about that. So before I mount this, what I'm going to do now is bring the camera down a little bit. This has been machined really, really well. Um, it is extremely flat. But before I actually mount my pad, uh, my hip silicon pad on there, I'm going to just touch over with uh, an abrasive soft pad. This is a 2000 grit, super soft, uh, super fine abrasive pad just to remove any slight pimples or scratch marks or anything in there I can. So I'm just gonna do that now and just get anything that's left there gone. I think that'll do. See uh, how much is uh, grime is left there. Quite a lot. Okay. Let's um, give it a rinse now. Some isopropanol. Okay, so the heat mat is on, and if we're still in shot, keep knocking the camera. So that is on. Let's add the little thermocouple. Okay, so that doesn't appear to stick very well. Um, that's okay. We can get rid of that. Uh, we 
can use some heat sink plaster we can try it. set for a bit. We don't really want to touch that now. This stuff takes a little while to go off. Here's the heat sink with the uh, K-type thermocouple attached with um, some silicon compound uh, the sticker that came with it with this uh, thermocouple wouldn't stick to the uh, original silicon heat mat so I've bonded it on with some silicon compound like so and I'm going to add this separate K type thermocouple to the center but it needs to be isolated um, electrically from the metal surfaces so it needs to have a uh, some barrier of a, of a sort to stop the electrical conductivity so I'm just gonna use some Loctite uh, copper silicon which is uh, designed for high temperature um, up to 350 degrees On the right, here we are. So that's Loctite SI5990. It's a high temperature silicon. And I'm just going to um, try and insulate this from the body. And hopefully, using this screw like that, it should be able to center in the hole and hopefully not touch um, the metal so we'll see how I get on but like I say I'll be using some of this to pack it out with and fix that on so I'm gonna fix this uh, extra thermocouple on and then we'll try and install the heater okay so both thermocouples are now mounted um, the uh, the gasket sealant silicon compound is set on this one and this one is now secured in place with some copper silicon Loctite SI5990 which is a high temperature compound but what I want to do is ensure that it's not electrically connected so um, I'm going to put this in resistance so I'm going to put my meter into the ohms into resistance put it onto 20k and let's just make sure yeah so the zero ohms just check the meter beforehand nothing wrong there and what I'm going to do is I'm going to touch on there that should be zero so there is electrical connection with the bolt and the heat sink but when I touch on the uh, thermocouple there should be nothing if there is an electrical connection between the bolt and the thermocouple then uh, it's not going to work very well you'll have problems so they need to be electrically isolated completely like so and as you can see that is electrically isolated from the heat sink so there's nothing between the bolt and the thermocouple that has been electrically grounded here so it's holding the thermocouple on nice and snug but it's not touching it metal to metal so that's what we're trying to achieve so that I think is good enough to go I've also fitted a uh, simple cable strain relief I'll show this here so I fitted a basic cable strain relief and some high temperature silicon sleeve which keeps everything nice and safe 
and stops from pulling on these when handling the heater and just protects everything. So there we go. The heater is uh, nearly ready to install. Right, so here's the heatsink virtually ready now to install. Uh, just one last thing to add, which is an essential component to this, and that is obviously a adequate earth. So, um, as with anything that's connected to the mains or any voltage above 24 volts, you should uh, suitably earth any metal component or um, extraneous metal object and uh, this will be classed as a, a uh, unsafe metal object if it wasn't earthed so if you're going to copy this or do anything similar please make sure you earth your uh, equipment correctly so this will connect down to the plug and that will be connected to the main earth chassis of my printer and should keep everything nice and safe and stop me from getting an electric shock so there we are nearly ready to install and uh, this should be suitable and safe to use um, as a reliable heat source so there we go just make sure guys you include that